by white topping. Covering the old asphalt with a concrete overlay. Concrete can succeed where asphalt fails. All pavements are not the same. There are great differences between concrete and asphalt besides their colors. Concrete is the pavement of choice for high stress traffic. Concrete pavement is rigid, remaining steadfastly in place, load after load, without rutting, shoving, or squeezing out of place. And concrete won't degrade when exposed to sunlight and air. Concrete is a structural material. It gains strength rapidly in its early life and continues gaining strength for years or even decades. Experienced facilities managers responsible for multiples of pavements with differing types of traffic have become well aware that for high stress areas such as those where truck or bus traffic is concentrated, concrete is the right pavement to use. In progressive communities, we need only to look as far as the nearest driveway approach, restaurant drive through or bus stop, for example. Concrete is there, performing well in the high stress areas. Concrete can easily be placed directly on existing asphalt with excellent results and much less future maintenance. From a contractor's point of view, building a concrete pavement on asphalt is almost identical to building it anywhere else, on the bare soil or on a layer of gravel base. The same labor, equipment, and materials are required to form and place the concrete. Level the surface of the slab and texture it. Cut joints in the concrete to control cracking and protect its moisture and temperature ranges until the concrete hardens. The designer or specifier must still review all the factors involved in designing a pavement when he's considering white topping. The difference is only that he's now considering concrete pavement on an asphalt treated base, which was designed, built, and used previously. He still needs to know about the traffic that will use it and about the soil that will be supporting it. He needs to know how the pavement area will shed rainwater and how long the owner expects the pavement to perform. For white topping, because he's considering placing new concrete on an existing asphalt material, he must evaluate the existing pavement. Where, how, and why did it fail to perform? What, if anything, must be done at those failed areas before placing concrete? The new concrete slab will work best if placed on a relatively smooth surface. Potholes and large cracks must be filled and edges of old patches must be smoothed. In addition, since asphalt often becomes severely rutted under heavy vehicles, it may be necessary to grind off the high ridges or fill in the deep ruts prior to concrete placement. Since the new pavement surface will be several inches higher than the existing, where will rainwater runoff now go? Would the overlay cause rainwater to drain into a building? Can existing drainage problems be improved with the overlay? How will the traffic roll smoothly between the new pavement and the existing grades? Are there existing fixed objects such as walls, curbs, drainage inlets, poles, concrete pavements, foundations, or fire hydrants that must be adjusted or isolated from the new concrete slab? Would the new thickness of pavement interfere with any swinging doors or gates or cause overhead clearance problems? Would adjacent walks or steps encounter a trip hazard at the edge of the overlay? For proper joint layout to control location and alignment of the shrinkage cracks, the guidelines for proper joint spacing and depth are the same as for any other concrete slabs. Concrete thickness requirements won't vary that much just because it will be placed on an old asphalt rather than a common stone-based material. In consideration of that, prudent specifiers who contract for overlay work use two separate pay items. One which covers all the accurately predictable costs labor and equipment to place, finish, joint, and cure the surface on a square yard basis, and another which covers the overlay material volume only on a cubic yard basis. The site chosen for a demonstration of white topping by the Ohio Ready Mixed Concrete Association is typical of many potential candidates for concrete overlays throughout our country. The demonstration pavement was a bus loop serving a public school in Columbus, Ohio. During the school season, about 56 school buses per day use this pavement to deliver and pick up children. Most of the buses use the right lane, adjacent to a concrete curb for passenger convenience and safety. 
When that lane is parked full, other buses must park along the left edge of the loop. The 29 feet wide, 336 feet long section of asphalt pavement had been sealed many times during its 20 year life and ruts along the right curb lane had been patch filled several times. The surface of the pavement had about five feet of fall from the drive entrance to the drainage inlet at the drive exit. Curb height along the right edge of pavement exceeded eight inches for most of the curb's length. With bus weight data and existing pavement information supplied by school system personnel, design pavement thickness for the overlay was computed to be five inches along the right edge. Thickness was tapered to four inches along the left edge for the low volume traffic lane. The taper was also intended to partially mitigate cross-flow drainage to the right curb. The only drainage inlet for the bus loop located near the exit was integral with the curb and consequently could not be adjusted for new pavement elevation. Existing pavement was excavated around the drain casting sufficiently so that the concrete overlay would have design thickness while providing a free draining, non-abrupt riding surface. Similar excavations were made at the loop entrance and exit and to the approach for an adjoining asphalt parking lot near the bus loop entrance. Again, these excavations would maintain design thickness for the new concrete pavement while providing non-abrupt riding transitions between the overlay and the existing surfaces. Although there were no potholes or major cracks or ruts in this asphalt to be filled, some of the patch material between previously filled ruts had to be removed to assure design thickness of the overlay. Sand was used at the cut edges to prevent restraint of the new concrete overlay slab where the patch material was removed. An extruded asphalt curb along the left edge of pavement was removed, which aided the forming for the new overlay. Other than existing concrete curb and one drainage casting, there were no other items to be isolated from the new slab. Nor were there any doors, gates, or overhead obstructions to be concerned about with this overlay's design. Except for the entrance and exit areas, which were hand-finished, the entire overlay was constructed in one pass with a vibratory screed. Control joints were cut with a lightweight saw shortly after finishing. With this saw, less depth was required than the traditional quarter thickness to achieve adequate crack control. For owners, white topping offers many advantages. Comparable cost. When the alternative is to completely remove and reconstruct with asphalt, white topping is cost competitive and a time saver. Long-term performance. A concrete overlay is a long-term, low-maintenance solution. It won't rut, shove, or ravel, and it doesn't require periodic resealing. Safer. With brighter light reflectance and firm texture surface, a concrete pavement provides safer driver visibility and surer traction under foot or wheel. Cleaner. White topping will prevent tracking onto your carpeting or vinyl flooring, putting an end to their oily yellow discolorations. For new construction plans, specify concrete pavement for all high-stress areas and any other areas where frequent maintenance would be disruptive, costly, or undesirable. For existing locations where the asphalt has not satisfied your needs, break the cycle of asphalt resealing or overlaying for good with white topping. Additional information and literature on white topping is available from the Portland Cement Association and the Ohio Ready Mixed Concrete Association.